In this video, we'll see how you can use Labelbox model to find and fix model errors. First off, your models are only as good as your training data, so ML teams need tools and workflows to improve the quality of their training data in order to boost model performance. A great way to boost model performance is to find edge cases on which the model is struggling, and then by adding really well-chosen data points to the training data so that the model learns to behave well on these edge cases. A key question for ML teams and labeling teams is where is my model struggling and how can I find and fix these patterns of model failures? You can use your train model as a guide to find model failures, and then you can fix those model failures with targeted improvements to your training data. Here's a systematic process that we've seen success with over again. The idea is to look for assets where your model predictions and labels disagree. One way to do that is to look at your model metrics and identify clusters of data points that have low model metrics, and this surfaces candidate assets where the model is struggling. Once you've surfaced these assets where the model is likely struggling, you can visually inspect them. The ability to go from quantitative metrics to being able to visually inspect these assets with predictions and labels is a superpower for many ML teams. Visually inspecting assets allows you to see several edge cases on which the model is struggling, allows you to bucket them into several patterns of model failures, and prioritize the most important model failures to fix. Once you've found the model failures that you want to fix, the goal becomes, how can I fix these model failures? You likely have a lot of unlabeled data sitting unused in some data lakes. Among your unlabeled data, the goal should be finding the data points that are most similar to the data on which your model is struggling, because among your unlabeled data, this is the data that you should label in priority. When you retrain the model on this newly labeled data, it can learn to make better predictions on these newly added data points and won't struggle as it did before. So in other words, you've fixed your model errors and have boosted model performance. This process is really difficult to do well in a systematic and scalable way. Your ML team needs tools and workflows to achieve this efficiently. Now let's see how you can easily do this with Labelbox. So here I've trained a neural network. It's a Facebook Detectron model doing object detection. So this model was trained on the official COCO dataset. We'll use this model as a guide to find model errors. The first section of the notebook trains the neural network. This typically happens outside of Labelbox, and I've hidden the code in this section of the notebook, but here are the important steps. First, I'll import the necessary models, and I'll export labels from my Labelbox project so that the neural net training happens outside of Labelbox. I'll get images for model training. Um, I need the assets, not just labels, for model training, and I'll assign them to different splits. Next, I will transform the assets and labels to a format that is readable by the Facebook Detectron model, and then I can create and train the neural network. And lastly, as a sanity check to see that things are working well and that the model is making reasonable predictions, I can just check this um, to make sure that the model is predicting things properly. Then all I have to do is upload my model predictions and metrics to Labelbox, and Labelbox model will help me find and fix my model errors. So I'll upload predictions that are above a confidence threshold of 0.5, and I picked an IOU threshold of 0.5, meaning that predictions and ground truths will be matched only if their IOU is above 0.5. Next, I can create a model and a model run. And when I open Labelbox, I'll see my model, object detection on COCO and I can click into that model and I'll see the model run named iteration one. Every model run is a neural net training experiment and future model runs can be seen in model. And here we have our first one, that's iteration one. Then I'll attach my data rows and assets to this model run. I can assign them to either the training set, validation set, or test set, and I can see these reflected in the UI. I'll attach ground truth labels to the model run and these are the labels that I'm trying to debug, where I'll try to find labeling mistakes with my model as my guide. These labels show up in label box as green bounding boxes, and I can inspect them in the UI. Finally, I'll upload my model predictions to the model run. In addition to the raw bounding box, I can also upload the confidence score associated with every prediction, as well as some model metrics like IOU. So here's where I upload predictions, and here's where I can upload metrics like confidence score, IOU, and confusion metrics. Now I can go into the Labelbox model UI and visualize my model predictions versus ground truths. The gallery view is really convenient to see exactly where model predictions and ground truths agree or disagree. 
On each asset, I have information about the predictions, and I can quickly see that the model predictions and ground truths on this particular asset look good. And this is where the power of the data engine comes into play. I'm going to surface patterns of model errors and fix them. Here, I'm looking at model metrics on this entire model run. Your exact strategy might vary depending on your use case, but let's say I'm inspecting the recall of my model for each class. I can also see how recall values change between my train, validate, and test splits. I can scroll down to inspect recall values, and I notice that the recall on the birds class is particularly low. There's a lot of false negatives on birds. By clicking on the histogram, Labelbox will bring up all the images that have the worst recall, and I can visually inspect them. If I want to go a step further, I can filter for only images that have at least five false negatives, and this will surface a bunch of assets, presumably with model errors that undermine my recall on birds. Now let's inspect some candidate model errors. By browsing through my assets, I start to notice a few patterns. For example, the model seems to fail to predict birds on the water. This is an edge case that I definitely want to fix. Another edge case that I notice is that my model fails to detect birds when there are many birds flying in the sky. Both of these edge cases are undermining my model recall. And now that I've visually spotted these edge cases, we can go and fix them. Using Labelbox, I can select a few images that correspond to this edge case of model failures, so many birds flying in the sky. I want to find similar images of birds flying in the sky among all of my unlabeled data. To do so, I can open these images in Catalog, my visual data lake, and search for similar images. In just a few clicks, Labelbox will surface data points that are similar to birds flying in the sky. So after we create a labeling function in Catalog, I can search on that labeling function that brings up many birds in the sky. To further refine my query to view only unlabeled images, so images that are not yet in my labeling project, I can filter by annotation is none. This leaves me with 226 images, and I can sample the first, say, 150 and send them to my labeling project, or I can manually select the ones that I care most about and send them to a labeling project. This way, my team can retrain the model on the newly labeled images of many birds flying in the sky, and the model will perform better on them. I can then evaluate model performance on each training split, but also on the specific edge case of birds, so that I can make sure the newly trained model is actually performing better on this edge case. So taking a step back, we've just looked at a key element of a powerful data engine, having a systematic way of finding and fixing model errors. Labelbox is the ultimate data engine to find and fix your model errors. It not only works at scale on hundreds of millions of assets, but your team can find and fix model mistakes without having to create messy or time-consuming Python notebooks. As a visual data engine, you can easily toggle between quantitative and qualitative metrics and collaborate across your ML and labeling teams to easily share insights and analytics. It also perfectly integrates with labeling. In just a click, you can send labels to rework. And lastly, it's programmatic. Set it up once in the UI, and the data pipelines will run automatically in the background to improve your training data. Unlike a data engine that you might build and maintain in-house, Labelbox does it all for you, and your data just keeps getting better over time.